Hello and welcome to the 8th in my series of Masterclass videos from MIDI Step. And in this video, it's all about Hive Mind. We're also going to be taking a look at a new way to control the way random notes are generated, both in the global randomised dialogue and when we're generating notes as part of a chord. So HiveMind is a new creation that allows multiple instances of MIDI step to work together. Let's take a look at an example. So as you can see from this example, uh, simply pressing these three buttons is causing a pattern change in every single instance of MIDI step. I have three instances here, drums, bass and chords. Now I want you to notice that if I was to change pattern on the drums instance, that pattern change is reflected on all instances, just like what happened when we pressed the buttons on the left. Only the buttons are sending an AU parameter to the drums instance to tell it to change patterns. And that is changing patterns on the other instances. Now in each of these instances, I've used pattern 1 to 4 for section A, 5 to 8 for section B, and then the ending is in pattern 16 at the bottom here. And by organizing your patterns in this way, you can just send a single pattern change to every instance and then change section of the song. Now the way this is achieved is using something called HiveMind. Now if we look at the main menu now, you'll see that there's an extra sub-menu called HiveMind. And if I click on this, you'll see there's a whole bunch of parameters here that we can subscribe to. Notice how we've subscribed to Pattern Change and Pattern Rewind on this instance which means if any other instance change, changes those parameters, this instance, this drum instance, will also change. If we click on all subscriptions, it will toggle all of the parameters, subscriptions on and off. So it's up to you. You can subscribe to everything or just individual messages. Now, in the case of Loopy Pro, we've added three extra additional buttons on the left of the display. And when we click them, all they're doing is sending an AU parameter to one of the instances. And because they're all subscribed using HiveMind, they all change at the same time. So no mystery here. So let's take a look at configuring this from scratch. Here in AUM, I have two instances of MIDI Step. There's a MIDI Step A and MIDI Step B. And what I want to do is show you that if I try and change pattern here, nothing happens on MIDI step B. If I pause, nothing happens on MIDI step B. Uh, right now, they're both independent of each other. But if we go to the Hive Mind menu and subscribe to all messages, then MIDI step A, the instance MIDI step A, is subscribed, but it still doesn't affect MIDI step B because it also needs to be subscribed to them same messages. So I'm going to go into the Hive Mind menu and enable everything. So now both instances are sub subscribed to all the messages. If I pattern switch in MIDI step A, it changes pattern in MIDI step B. If I pause in MIDI step A, it pauses in MIDI step B. I can even switch to MIDI step B and do the same thing. So it works. Uh, you can choose each, any instance to uh, change parameters or change pattern. So now the two are connected. Uh, I'm going to 
switch to the pattern creator and try and create a chord pattern now you'll notice here I'm getting an error and if you take a look it's all to do with the fact we haven't selected a scale so notice when I select a scale in MIDI step A the scale changes in MIDI step B if I change the key in MIDI step A to D it changes in MIDI step B now what I'm going to do is create a pattern a chord pattern in pattern position 1 of MIDI step A now supposing I want to copy that pattern to MIDI step uh, to MIDI step B this instance here I want to copy it into pattern position 1 all we do is long press on the copy button with that pattern selected select the instance we want to copy to and then select the pattern number and voila we've copied a pattern from one instance to another now this is really useful when working with multiple instances together you can check that rhythmic quality of one pattern across to another and make modifications now we're bound to be adding more functionality to the hive mind uh, over time um, but for now the idea of actually working together with multiple instances being able to switch patterns and copy patterns is a godsend now as well as hive mind we've added a few collaboration shortcuts and these are useful if you quickly want to set something up in on other instances uh, to match the one that you're currently using now i've disabled hive mind so that when i just click on another pattern number you'll see that it changes independent of uh, instance b um, and when i change uh, scale instance b is ignoring that but if I was to press and hold the shift button here and then change key, you'll see that it changes key in instance B. And if I change scale, it changes scale in instance B. This is, allows you to push key and scale to all running instances. And this is also true of pattern select. If I hold the shift down and change pattern, all other instances of mini step will change pattern and this is regardless of hive mind settings now there's even a shortcut for copying patterns but uh, it works slightly different to the one in hive mind as you can see here instance b has nothing there at the minute in pattern one but if we hold shift in uh, midi step a and then hit copy you'll see that it copies the currently selected pattern to the equivalent pattern position in midi step b so let's turn our attention away from automation and have a look at the new improved note skip function now as you can see here i've got a simple four note melody uh, just for simplicity so we can hear the note skip in action now as you should know if you click on the numbered column uh, up here um, you will change the selected uh, event or the selected step should i say and down in this bottom right corner here you'll see the step options are reflected and one of those step options is something called note skip now i'm sure many of you pl have played with this but uh, let's listen to this before i make any changes now with step three active if i change the note skip to two you'll notice that every other note is skipped And if I set note skip to three, every third cycle, the note is skipped. Now this is how note skip works in general. But what about the scenario where I want to play one note in three instead of skipping one note in three well now if i double tap on the note skip knob you'll see that it changes from three to one over three and listen to the difference you can hear it's only playing once every third cycle now we can up back to four and have it just play once every fourth cycle if we wish
And of course, to get back to skipping one out of four notes, just double tap uh, on the note skip button. So this is a, a new addition to note skip, and I think another welcome change. Now, another important change we've made to 1.08 is the uh, note uh, randomization algorithm that is used alongside chords. Now, as you can see here, I have a pattern with a pattern length of one. And if you play it back, we just get a monotonous tone on uh, C4. Now, as you know, we can add additional notes just by uh, tapping on the chord editor. And we could change those chords at every step if we wished. But to step it up a little, you can long press on the chord button and change it to random. And you notice that additional notes are randomly added to that chord. And the number of notes that are played is determined by the complexity setting. So with a complexity setting of two, one additional note will be added to the C4. Now if I manually add another note to the chord editor, then we have two notes and we've already satisfied the complexity. So it's important to note this, you can specify which notes you want and then up the complexity to add additional notes. So the higher you set the complexity, the more notes are added to the notes within the chord editor. Now if we set the complexity to something like 7 or even 8, which is more than the number of notes in the scale, it sounds more harmonically pleasing. Now as you know, if you press the chord button, you'll get the chord menu appear. But if we were to swipe down on that, we get a new dialogue now. Now I've been working closely with David Collett, who is a musical genius, and he's come up with a new algorithm for generating notes in chords, which is far, far better than what we had before. And these knobs here allow us to configure uh, the, the randomization of the, of the notes and uh, allow you to determine the spread of the notes and how in inharmonic they can be. We can now select different harmonic order of notes that are generated and also we can uh, alter the crunch which is the amount of dissonant tones that appear within the chords. So this is a really nice addition. It's, uh, it's been great to have the randomization feature there on the chords, but every now and again, you'll notice a dissonant note creeping in. And I think we've, uh, we've curbed that with uh, this new uh, algorithm that me and David have been working on. So this uh, control panel that we've added for the random note generation also works with, um, with the randomization dialog. So if I go into the randomization dialog, uh, temporarily turn off the some of the randomization options uh, set the chord randomization to 100% uh, just decrease the maximum uh, note value so that every time I hit the randomize selected button you'll see that there's a new chord generated and uh, if we bring up this this control panel now you'll see that um, the more I can turn up the uh, complexity so we can get a few more notes uh, generated and uh, you then see the spread of notes uh, and how this works. We can change the uh, octave bias if we wish and push more notes up into the upper octave uh, which gives uh, it a little bit more shine. So it's worth playing around with this. So this, this whole uh, uh, random note settings dialog uh, works in these two instances. Now notice if I put the chord complexity up high and the crunch up high, when I start generating chords you'll randomly get in uh, notes that are adjacent other notes. In other words we're creating clashes. So it's up to you now whether you want those clashes or not. If the complexity exceeds the number of notes in the scale we get duplicate notes. In other words, here you can see the root note was duplicated. 
This can also happen if crunch is set to zero. In other words, you don't want any dissonant notes within that chord or within that scale. In which case, it's going to run out of notes and it has to do duplicates. But the algorithm takes care of all that for you. Now, I'm sure we'll be refining and tweaking this over time, but it makes uh, a big difference, I think, to uh, to the quality of what we're producing uh, in terms of random uh, notes. So uh, a big thank you to David for helping me out with that one. So that brings me to the last thing I want to talk about today, and that's the ability to load and save drum mappings. Now, in the previous Masterclass video, I introduced the drum editor and the ability to direct create uh, drum patterns randomly using the pattern creator. Now this is a very, very flexible uh, utility and uh, it creates some great results. Uh, but the great thing about this is um, it had this drum editor that allowed us to map individual notes within MIDI step to either uh, general MIDI uh, instruments, drum instruments, or to digi sticks uh, so this was very useful and all these settings were saved uh, within the uh, saved session but as of version 1.08 we now have uh, load and save buttons within the drum editor now this allow us to, allows us to save um, drum mappings independently of the session so if you want to uh, later load a drum mapping into a different session you can and before we leave this topic, I want to show you that it is possible to um, back up those uh, drum mappings uh, by simply uh, pressing on the load button and dragging and dropping these files uh, directly to the Files app. You can also uh, drop them back to re-import them again, but obviously I've got that one already in there. So that's just about it for this video. Uh, I hope you all enjoyed what you've seen. Please don't forget to thumb up the video as it really, really helps. And subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I know a lot of you that watch this channel are not subscribed. So hit the subscribe button and let's spread the word. I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.